You were born in Winnipeg. Born in Winnipeg, yeah, 1940. I got into music when I was about uh, 14, I guess. I met Lenny when I was 16. Uh, I was playing a place called the Rainbow Dance Gardens in Winnipeg, and they walked in and, uh, well, we knew, but we knew who they were. We listened to the radio show. I mean, we never met them, or, but we certainly knew who they were. Right. And uh, they finished an early show, and they came in, and they were, and uh, he was dressed. They were dressed like stars. You know, Pine had the hat on and the cowboy. Yeah, the suit. And Betty, a beautiful dress, and, and Lenny, I'll never forget Lenny, he had a white suit on, in white shoes, white bucks, and he's carrying a, a, his guitar, which is a Gretsch in a white leather case. Right. And it was, uh, and he had wavy black hair, and he, he was a small stature, but he, he was a cross between Sal Minio and, uh, and Tony Curtis. Mm -hmm. That's we, the girls just gasped, they didn't know who he was. In the in the audience, they didn't know, but they knew he must have been a star. He must be a star. And, uh, anyway, we got the note requesting uh, a song, an Elvis Presley song, which I used to do a lot of at the time. And uh, Hal Lone Pine signed. <laughs> so then we knew exactly who they were, and uh, everybody checked their tunings, you know, make sure we were in tune. In the accordion player, you know, checked his octaves <laughs> in the band. And anyway, after doing a couple of other tunes, I, I went and I was invited over the table, so I went and sat down with him and talked to them. And, and uh, so he asked me, right, they asked me right then and there, they said they needed a rock and roll singer for the show. And would I be interested? And also, I'd be a <coughs> perfect age as a companion for Lenny. So, I accepted, even though I was still in school, and uh, then living at home, you know, so I had to go through that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but anyway, I, I accepted, and uh, I asked Lenny if he wanted to sit in with the band that night. That night, because he had his guitar anyway. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they just came off the road, and he didn't want to leave it in the car. And he said, "Sure, he said, give me a chance to learn some of your stuff anyway." And I said, when do we start? This is like a Friday night or a Saturday night. And uh, they said, Monday. We start recording Monday at CKY. So they thought it was a good idea. So anyway, Lenny got up and unpacked his his guitar. And he and I sang a couple of tunes. And, but the pe people were screaming for Lenny. I mean, they, they were just, I mean, he was a radio star. I mean, it's important to realize that, you know, back in 56, there was no television, radio was king, and I mean, these were radio stars, you know, and, all, and came from the States on top of it. I mean, anybody who came from the States to Canada must, have, must be better than anyone else, sort of thing, you know. But Lenny, of course, played all the Chet Atkins at the time. Anyway, we ended up playing all his songs that night, <laughs> because uh, they just wanted more and more Lenny, you know. What sort of songs were they? Oh, well, just Chet Ack, all Chet Ack and Chet stuff. And stuff. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The band was, was working with that. Yeah, oh yeah, the, right. the guys are pretty good there. We all knew the Chet stuff anyway. You know? Right. But, so we just ended up playing background for him. But, uh, I mean, I did sing and he backed me up. <coughs> of course, the big tunes at the time were the Everly Brothers and that kind of thing, so mm -hmm. in 56. You know. So I started on the road with them, and uh, Lenny and I roomed together. Play pool. He was a heck of a pool player. I don't know if anybody ever knew that, but we played pool every day, um, and he was good. He was you know, dedicated, you mm -hmm. know, to becoming the best, and as it wasn't anything else he did. You know, he would practice in the back of the car. His dad had a great big white Cadillac, a 1954 stretch Cadillac. You know, CKY Caravan was written all over the side. And they had a you know, big uh, a container on top of the car, you know, we call them again, you know, for putting in the instruments. Well, actually, there was only, the only electric instrument was Lenny's. He had an amp. Mm -hmm. The rest was all acoustic, including the bass. Can you describe a, a typical day, that, you know, a typical show? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, we start off Monday recording the week, because it was on every morning. And then we take off for a little town. And uh, usually these, these towns, uh, you know, 
a lot of the roads weren't paved, especially when it's Saskatchewan. We worked out of Saskatchewan too. Um, and a lot of the towns had, and the hotels, you know, I had a hitching post for the, still for the horses, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's the way it was. Uh -huh. And uh, spittoons, you know, the lobby, I still remember that. And, and uh, yeah, I think about it often, thinking, gee, you know, when they, with the old movies that they make, I say, gee, I stayed in those hotels, looked exactly like that, you know. Um, rooms, you know, with a with, uh, bathroom down the hall, common bathroom. Uh, not, of course, not a, no lamps, just overhead light bulbs. Um, they all had a fire escape, you know, you sneak up, you know, local ladies. <laughs> and uh, let's see what else. And then we'd, we'd hit town and, uh, and we'd um, set up, you know, for the show. And usually it was in a theater, the movie, th local movie theater, that's usually what we played. On the weekends, we'd, we'd try and go to the community halls because uh, we'd also play a dance. So beside the two-hour sh show, we play also play a four-hour dance. So at, at the um, at the movie theaters, it was just a straight-ahead show. Okay. Yeah, and usually that was Monday to Thursday. Right. Okay. Because uh, you know, nobody went out during the week. But it was a two-hour show, and they had he had a he had a, uh, a light show with him. When I say a light show, a black light show. You know, it's popular now. The black lights for bedrooms and that kind of thing. Well, they used to carry them on the road. Two little spotlights. There were black lights. And uh, in our outfits, were painted invisible paint that turned the color when the lights were off. Is that right? Yeah. And Lenny's uh, Lenny's Gretsch, his red orange Gretsch, just looked orange, but he but he had that paint that that you know invisible paint. Right. And so when the when everything went out, you just saw this all this glow, uh -huh. this sort of thing. And of course, all the white fringe, you right. know, would. Uh, the white hat and the teeth, you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. So it was quite effective. And that was that was the light show. He had this the the PA system was a telephone system, consisting of you know uh, uh, two speakers about like DA big, maybe a 12 inch, you know, maybe 10 inch, you know. And they and of course it would be a record player in the middle. That's the way it came. But that's also the amplifier, and you close them up. There's the speakers and the whole thing was about this big, and that's your amp, that's your PA system. The old microphones, of course, the big, the big microphones. Um, as I say, the only, the only uh, was Lenny with his amplifier. That was it. The rest was all acoustic. So there's one microphone, and uh, Pine would uh, kick off the show, and uh, he was a masterful showman. Uh, this guy would get this audience going, and, and then he'd introduce us. And I'd be on stage, of course, at the same time playing rhythm guitar. And Lenny and Jimmy Daughtry playing bass. And uh, then he'd bring on Betty, and it was, it was a family show, so there was a lot of jokes and that kind of thing, you know. A lot of silly little jokes, but they worked, you know. Right. Yeah. And Jimmy Daughtry, was he also the comedian? He was also Crazy Elmer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Crazy Elmer, they call him. And, uh, he, Jimmy liked to drink quite a bit. He was, uh, I don't know if he's alive or not, but I remember recall a time when he was sitting on, he had to sit down on his amplifier and, and just do you know, the old classic or over the back, you know. A lot of guys have done that, and he was one of them. <laughs> 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 on stage, yeah. So how long would you be out on the road at a time? I mean, you do the, you do the recording on Monday, and then yeah. would you be out for the next five days? Yeah. Yeah, we'd be back, uh, and usually on the on the Saturday we'd be close to home, we'd make the loop kind of thing, you know, right. and uh, book something real close on a Saturday, so we'd get back so we could come home on the Friday night, go to our own homes, and and then just meet up at the station, and get the Cadillac, and drive to the to the show that night, right. and come back. It's also like for saving money too, and uh, for hotel rooms. So, yeah. Were the shows? Mainly within the CKY listening area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that would have extended to. Well, it was back then. It was it was fifty thousand watts. Right. So I mean, it was big. It was one of the big stations back in AM. I mean, that, well, there was only AM. Mm -hmm. 
So the signal went a long way. So we were both doing shows down in North Dakota too. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. And then we moved over to Saskatchewan. And uh, Lenny and I was working at Moose Jaw, C H A B. And Lenny didn't last too long there, though. He, uh-huh. he finally had, had it with his dad, and he left. Right. Yeah. Was that uh, was that when Hal was playing at the Haywood Hotel? Haywood? We were staying at the Harwood. Okay, Harwood. Yeah, we lived at the Harwood Hotel. And w- in those days, w- what was Lenny like? I mean, did he seem happy and content? And yeah, well, le- he was used to the life pretty much. Yeah, he was. Well, he was a musician on the road. I mean, he, mm-hmm. with his his family was the road, you know, and uh, that's all he knew. Knows as we move to guitar players, and this fella is probably one of the finest musicians you'll hear anywhere. Some people know him as Lone Pine Jr., the son of Betty Cody and Hal Lone Pine, but jazz buffs know him as Lenny Bro. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thompson on bass and Dave Lewis on drums. How about a hand for them? Yeah. Hey, Lenny. Why don't we do something that we used to do together when we were on the road, all right? How about an old blues? Oh, okay. Sure. 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 I hope it's me, Woman Blues. Well, I got a woman mean as she can be. Well, I got a woman mean as she can be. Well, sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Come on, my cat up, died of fright because she crossed his path last night. I got a woman. She got ruby lips, she got shaved lips, and oh, hot dog, my heart is broken. I got a woman mean as she can be. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. It's a cat, my Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Hey, we'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away. Be right back. <laughs> 